lot going on? Is your day moving slow? Then kick up your feet and grab a cup of joe. Or grab a cup of water, whatever works for you. It's time to hang with Harry. So without further ado, the man of the hour with something to say, it's Pastor Harry Curry. Take it away. What an introduction. Oh my goodness, I feel like such a celebrity. Well, it is Tuesday night, and that's about our favorite time of the week because it's called Hanging with Harry. And it's a fun night. It's not a, uh, it is a friendly conversation with a spiritual flavor. Now, don't forget that. Oh, you got that right this time. I know, I've learned how. It's a friendly conversation with a spiritual flavor. And so it's good. Tonight, I have a couple of, well, I don't know whether to call them guests or not. I have a couple of criminals here with me. And uh, so it's a joy to have them. And uh, to my right is Jesse Ford. Hi, Jesse. You want to say hi to everybody, Jesse? Hello, everybody out there in the Facebook world. Yeah. YouTube world also. Okay. And, uh, and James Curry, my oldest son. Hey, how are you? Glad to be here tonight. And uh, they're not here by accident. Uh, they're here. This has been a long venture for them. And uh, so, James, tell us why you're here. Or one of you, tell us why you're here. <clears throat> so 15 years ago, me and Jesse were at different points of our lives. And we, we really were kind of searching, trying to figure out, you know, what, what are we going to do with ourselves? What, what's something that would 15 really years be, ago we were figuring that out? Probably 15 years ago, so somebody do the math there. I don't know what that is. But anyway, we started to think about something that would be right up our alley, something that we both could get on board with. So we thought maybe we should start a radio show. Because we have faces for radio. We have faces for radio, clearly. So we thought about maybe starting a radio show. And it would be all sorts of topics, uh, you know, sports, political things of the day, just really anything that was That's going on. That, that was a short list. That was a short list. Of, <laughs> of, uh, 15 years ago, that was a short list. But that's kind of what it started. And, and uh, we had a lot of ideas back then. Most of them don't transpire to this show today by any means. I mean, if we're, are you going to be honest to the people? It was mostly you with the dreams of having the radio show and then me with the realistic idea of St. James. That's never going to happen for me. That was yet. pretty much it. But it, was, it could have been an amazing thing. There and was so, a there wait, was, was a couple. Trying to limit. Wait, 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 wait. Was that, that right now? was that in the same season as the first light? Uh, <laughs> it might have been. I, uh, there was oh, a time. So. There was a time around, I don't know, 15, 16, 17, that I, I had a real venture and a real idea that I wish I could have gotten on top of, and it was what I like to call the purse light. And what it was is, ladies, you know, if they're out in the dark, out somewhere, right. anywhere, you're being yeah, serious, yeah, this? anywhere, and you know, they're always digging around their purse dark car, whatever the situation, when they open their purse, a light would be installed and the light would come on and be LED and they could see everything they see. What do you know see. about anything about what's inside of people's purses? I didn't know, but the premise was that these ladies would use this product. So I got real excited about it and then I went to, now, I remember, purses. yeah, I remember distinctly, I was in, I was at a mall, the big, big mom, Houston, what's that called? The there's, big mall there's a Houston. mall of America, but it's in Minneapolis, Minnesota. No, there's a big mall in Houston, like the Mini Mall of America. Chat, the Mini, Mini mall, mall of America. America. But anyway, so I went in there and uh, the Gucci store, and I, I'll never forget, I looked at the light, or I looked at the purse, and I opened it up, and they had something. You in the similar. Gucci store? I was in the Gucci store. They let you in the Gucci I was going yeah, really. to try to pitch my idea right then and there to the salesperson. But it's they, like uh, that scene from Mighty Ducks 2, where he rings the buzzer to let him in, and he lies to him to get in, and then they kick him out. Yeah, that's pretty much how it was. So, so a purse light, and that the didn't talk take show off? has begun. Here uh, we go. The, the purse light didn't take off. No, it didn't take off. Well, it did for somebody. Shocker of the day. It did for somebody, not me, though. But I'm, I'm kind of... Somebody actually invited a purse light. I've always had the entrepreneurial... Like, if, if you can create a service or a good that folks really need, and, and invention, if you will, Jay, not only can you better the world, you become super rich, and also better the world when you become super rich because you're giving away all your money and helping people like Facebook does. I feel like you, you want know. a shark tank too much. Now, wait, yeah. wait, wait, wait. Some, I can remember that summer. He was at youth camp, and he said, uh, probably ne I won't be here next year. Cause I'll make money from That's right. Life. Right. Next year. <laughs> you seen uh, the light bulb go off yeah. on top of his head. Yeah. yeah was, and he thought, if I can just get that light bulb off the top of my head and into purses, I'd, have, I'd be a millionaire. Probably 15, now, wait, wait, let me throw in a little uh, friendly spiritual conversation. Okay. Jesus With said, flavor. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. There you Amen. go. Okay, Amen. we can go on. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so, yeah, tonight we're just, we're here to have fun. We're hoping people are getting on. Uh, you know, I enjoy this every Tuesday night. I watch Hanging with sure. Harry and... These guys, uh, Tim Miller, I think, cropped a chef hat on him uh, <laughs> with some uh, pictures a couple weeks ago. I thought that was cool because I missed that episode. I was like, why do you have a chef hat on? And they told me to crop that on there. So 
It is this amazing is, how fast Tim Miller's name gets brought up every Tuesday. I know. So he should be a guest here right I'm, I'm really, I am shocked Tim Miller's not here tonight yeah. because we are the two biggest stars in this church, and he's not here to take pictures of us. Yeah, I don't know about that. I mean, but, I'm just, uh, I mean he really, he should be here with this telescope. I think Tim this Miller telescope. would have to come via Zoom. I don't think there's any way he'd be here. He's, no. <laughs> he's as OCD as they come. I was going to say, I'm sure Tim's yeah. not out of the he's, house He's probably very right comfortable now. right now in his chair. So, so what do you think about, I mean, in a very uh, uh, appropriate way. What do you think about this circumstance we're in right now? All these things that are happening, the situations that people are facing. I mean, obviously a pretty serious time. Everybody in the world's talking about it. it what, what do you think? It's a different time in the world. It, it's, it's, the, it's kind of a strange time where when we're older and our kids and grandkids, we're going like to actually have stories to tell them of the great coronavirus of right. 2020 and stuff. What, what, what? What do you think about when people say the new normal and things like that? Like, I understand. Well, I was just telling Trevor today, yeah. like, a lot of people, because this has been going on for four weeks now, so a lot of At people least. are almost kind of used to the whole takeout and curbside and stuff like that. And I'll tell Trevor, I said, when everything opens back up to normal, it might be a little different from people because people are already used to maybe right. this new norm that's been going on for What about weeks. you? Like, if you have an opportunity to go to a place and eat or go to curbside and pick it up, what, what are you going to do? Are you going to be a guy that goes... And so oh, I'm going to take it back to the basement, watch the game, do what I want to do. Well, hopefully the game or whatever's on. Or are you going to be a guy, I want to go be with the people, rub elbows, you know. I'm not a be with the people, rub elbows type of guy anyway. anyway so, okay. you know, so it's always, it's, a, it's always, uh, yeah. it's always like my choices. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm not supposed downstairs. to. Downstairs. Yeah. Yeah. Forgive me, guys. I'm more of a, I'm more of a, a, a it's, downstairs. It's, it's definitely an interesting environment. To it the is. point of that it's created something like, so we're on this, this tonight with Hanging with Harry because Hanging with Harry was, basically brought out of thin air because of the necessity of connecting with one another. I mean, it's it's a very unique time that we're living in. And, you know, for a lot of people, I think it would be a fearful time. Here's a good spiritual aspect. And for a lot of people, it can be a fearful time, I think. And it's just, it's interesting, you know, depending on what you're grounded in, if you really look into what's going on, you can, you can be, you can really get caught up in a lot of what's happening. And it can be a scary thing. You know? hey, we're we're going to have a lot of fun tonight, and we're going to play a game, and we're going to do all kinds of things. But I, I want to ask you guys, I've been thinking all day about kind of what you're talking about. And people that go through this season, it's been interesting to me. I've talked to a lot of people in the church that, that, quite frankly, tell you they're doing well. They're learning some things. They're growing through it. Now, they, they don't like it. It's not easy. It's not enjoyable. But, man, they're moving through it. And then you see other people that are. They're not moving through it very well. And, and there are Christians that are doing fine, you can't say that, but but there's a whole group that feels like they're just moving backwards, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think about the people in our church, and I feel like there are people that whenever we get back to worship together, we'll be thrilled to be here, and we'll, we won't be able to wait, and they'll right. want to greet everybody. And there's another whole crowd that's... Can you check the mic? I'm muted. Is it muted? Yeah, it's muted. muted. Okay, there we go. Thank you, Ben. Thank you. I could Thank have you, just ben. leaned in for him a little bit. So, we could yeah, have talked right. to my so, chest. <laughs> I think, yeah, Ben's a bit. We could not do any of this without yeah, Ben. Kidding. Everybody in the country yeah. needs to say thank you to Ben. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, Ben. Uh, thank you, ben. So I think there's a crew that's going to just he use this. I think it's interesting. There are people that are going to use this time and move forward, and there are people that are going to take this time and move backward. Yeah. And so it's just like you can go either direction with it. Yeah. You can use the difficult to kind of learn and grow. Would you say people moving backwards is more of a fear thing? I don't know. I think we're all basically afraid to some degree. I don't know. I mean, I I've, encountered, I've encountered people that have no fear to it. When they, I think they should be a little bit more fearful than they yeah. are. Um, my parents, are, for one, are not fearful of what's going on. i got to educate them that, you know, you're at that age, both are diabetics, that, you know, if you get it, you know, I told him, I said, I'm going to start digging because, I mean, you know, it's, it's going to be a struggle for you. That's what you told him, huh? I'm yeah, start digging. absolutely. That's, that's what what they, they they well, I was just trying to, I was just, loving son right there. Yeah, I was I'm just, just trying to put a little fear there, into Karen. him, you know? I was yeah. just trying to be a little Come fearful. On. Come so, on. But, I mean, wow. you know, myself, I should probably be a little bit more fearful than what I am of it. I mean, I, for one, am not a guy that's going to wear a mask and, and gloves yeah. and stuff like that. So, so it's, it's become this thing, and all this stuff's being created out of it, right? All the different things that are happening. There's no sports. There's no, so everybody knows this stuff. It's just like it's so crazy when you still talk to people, and you're like, well, yeah, there's nothing going on. You know, I'm a ball player. I play ball and play when I can a couple times a week. Jenna Curry's probably watching. It's usually once a week now if I'm lucky <laughs> and if I'm good. Uh, but, you know, 
even that camaraderie you're going to play basketball with guys, not being able to do that, that's a big thing, man. Yeah. Like, I've done that for literally years and years and years and not having that. And, and just other things that you take for granted, like going to a park or going to some of the different things you can do. And so that's not what tonight's about, but it's just, I think it's so interesting, all these different things that have come out of this time. And uh, one of the best things that's come out, I'm, I'm just going to jump into this. One of the best things that's come out of this is uh, this Last Dance documentary. Have you seen that? I did. I watched the first so, two episodes. So what, explain to the folks what Last Dance is if they haven't seen it. Last Dance is a documentary that ESPN is doing that they actually bumped up because of the, the lack of sports going on. ESPN just decided with, I think, the outcry of a lot of people, fans, to go ahead and put the documentary on because it was supposed to come out after the NBA right. Finals, which is in June. It would have been a long time from now. Um, and, and really, The Last Dance is about the 1997-1998 Chicago Bulls. They have won five NBA titles. Um, and it, I, don't, I don't know if I want to give spoilers out to the people, so spoiler alert, but um, it, it is about the butting heads of superstar Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen, the head coach Phil Jackson, and the GM, Jerry Krause, who... He is, he, he is a, uh, a guy that thinks that he can sit behind a desk and behind a computer and crunch numbers and figure out. And his actual quote was, he says it was taken out of context, is, is uh, players don't win championships, organizations do. So, and that really didn't sit well with the players and stuff. So he's that type of guy. And then you got superstars like Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen who are like, he couldn't have done it without us. And so they have actually approached Phil Jackson and said, this is going to be your last season coaching the Chicago Bulls. So Phil Jackson, actually before the season started, had a players meeting and said, this is our last dance. So that's why it's called The Last Dance. Right. And um, unbeknownst to me, but I, I read an article about how Michael Jordan actually gave this film crew back in 1997-98 um, access to the locker room and to follow them around, I mean, the world. Um, and he said, you cannot use the footage until I give you permission to use the footage. So here it is in 2020. Yeah. Wow. You know, now it's yeah. time for him to come out. And I think from what I read was the, the same director did a documentary about Allen Iverson, who Michael Jordan actually liked the documentary. So he said, all right, now it's time. Six million viewers. So yeah. there's two episodes being released at the time. And this is a great plug for those guys. Not that we're doing that, but. Yeah, if MJ wants to throw something. Yeah, sure, yeah. It. If you want to, you know, anything. Uh, but anyway, so six million viewers the first night. Two doc, t there's ten part series. Yes. They do two every Sunday night. So the next Sunday will be the next two. Next two parter. It'd be three and four. Right. So it's just amazing, you know. And and being a guy that's into sports and like I love it, but you know I love Jesus more than I do sports. Just to clarify all that. But <laughs> hey, we like to pass the time. Hey, if you miss fun. if you miss the first two, can you still get on? I'm sure they'll be yeah. on Sunday. Yeah, I'm sure they'll be uh, on Sunday before the next two come on. There, okay. They come be, on Sunday nights at nine o'clock, and the second yeah. episode will come on at ten o'clock. It's a little late, but yeah, six you know. million people watching this thing though. And so here's the thing, like. So, because we're talking about culture, right? I mean, what we're experiencing right now is a major, major culture shift from the standpoint of how we have done our culture for years. This team was such a late 90s, early 90s culture shock. I mean, yeah. it's just watching this documentary, and me at that age, what? Oh, so, yeah. I would have been in 1996. You're showing and, your age now. So, yeah, 1990, huh? Ten years so, old. 10 years old. It's good math. Uh, I'm getting involved in basketball and starting to play more and enjoy it. I cut my teeth on the Chicago Bulls, yeah. the 96 Bulls, and the 96 UK Wildcats. I'm telling you right now, I grew up thinking this is what basketball is. Who in the world wouldn't want to be a part of this type of stuff? And culturally, it's just so crazy. You watch that last dance concept and all these different things, and it's like so much of our culture was wrapped up in that. And similarly, you look at today, and in 2020, we're in a coronavirus culture. And so much of our culture and just what we're doing is being dictated now for how we're going to move forward. Like if somebody says, I heard this on the radio the other day, I'm going to take it from whoever said it, but I thought it was awesome. He said, you know, Michael Jordan, and he was kind of, he wasn't bashing LeBron, but he was giving LeBron a little bit of the business because in my personal opinion, there's no comparison. And people that got to watch Michael, most people say the same. But anyway, what he says is, uh, he says, there's nobody that says, well, that guy is the LeBron James of whatever, right? Michael Jordan coined the phrase of, this guy is the Michael Jordan of landscaping. This guy is the Michael Jar Jordan of carpet cleaning. Well, it just shows this you guy, the, yeah. the, two, the two different cultures that we live in. There's, there's probably a divided line between uh, the Jordan era and then the LeBron era. And, and yeah. luckily for us, we're, we have grown up in... In both eras. It's a generational thing. Yes, we've both we've grown up in both eras. So I mean, like you said, I remember watching him almost every night on WGN right. and 
and in everything else. So, so okay, I'll, let me let me ask you a question. Let me I'm gonna jump in this sure, conversation. Sure, absolutely. Yeah. Jump right on. Because I've never heard of the Last Dance. Okay. I, mean, I do know of Michael Jordan. Okay. And uh, I've watched him play, not in person. I'd like to have done that, but is that related at all to the last lecture? You ever heard the last? You know anything about the last? No, lecture? No, you have to fill me in on that one. Uh, it's like a guy that has spent his lifetime and career teaching a subject, and this is the last classroom lecture that he'll ever give. Huh. He's supposed to be challenged in that hour to bring together, uh, you know, the impact, the influence, just yeah. to summarize. Right. What that is meant to him in that last and, lecture, and I think which is an interesting. And kind I think of thing. you're on to something right there because a lot of people don't realize Phil Jackson is um, a really a deep person when it comes to um, just not the game of basketball but the game of life too. But um, and he told him he said, guys, this is going to be our last dance because this is the last year that I'm going to coach. And I'm sure he knew he was going to go coach somewhere else, you know, after that. Um, but you know, he told him he said, you know, soak every day in because this is the last of the run. And and the documentary starts off with them in preseason before the season starts. So they go to France, and Michael Jordan's like, "I feel like we're bigger than the Beatles over here because literally just mobbed everywhere." Okay, let's, you know, let's, yeah, let's, let's, let's take it. Uh, let's take switch this gears just, here. Now, we'll switch just a little bit, just for the fun of it. Let's take this to talk about. So, what if we knew this is your last dance? Do you play better? Do you? I mean, I, well, I'm not being morbid. I'm not just being. You know, let me give you an illustration. Most of you guys, some of you guys know that Anita's mom just died. And, uh, man, I don't mean, to, that's a strange subject right after right. Uh, no. Michael Jordan. And I basketball. see where you're going, though. Yeah, what I'm going is, to, yeah. so we, now we're processing our home, and I'm going back every week to mow the grass. And I'm like, man, why didn't I mow the grass while she was living? Why didn't I take care of that a little bit? Why didn't I do a better job? Right. You know, in those days, and now the, the, the dance is over, yeah. and I'm like, now you go back to the reflection of it. Yeah, yeah. Kind of like, uh, you know, you went been through that with some of your family yes. not too long ago. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and it's just like, uh, man. Yeah. You think about Gigi, you think, man, why, why didn't I? Yeah. Do, I don't know. I don't mean to be morbid. No, that's, But it's a good season a, for us to think. Yeah, I mean, no. think, how do you want to be living? Somebody yeah. said, I think it, it was um, Stephen Covey. The leadership guru, you guys probably not been exposed to Stephen Covey, Seven Habits of, can you help me, Ben? Successful. Seven Habits of? Successful. Something like successful that. Successful people of or something like that. Yeah. Oh, successful people. Yeah, something like that. So these seven habits. Right early in the book he said, <laughs> very interesting, imagine yourself, you guys won't like this, these guys are both in the Enneagrams, they're number sevens which means they don't like difficult We things. can go back to okay, this, but no, I, I've been told that my number is no longer a seven. Okay, well, okay, let's go. It's supposed to be a fun okay, show. Okay, this is a fun oh. show. So, Kobe said, imagine yourself in a funeral home. I know you don't like that. Okay. Go in a funeral parlor, look in the casket, and you're in there. What do you want people to be saying about you when they come into the room? Now, this is a great leadership guru. Yeah. He said... Now live your life in such a way that that's that is what they'll say. Amen. That's a good, you know, that's yeah. a pretty good leadership word, man. That's a strong really word. Good. Maybe we need to see if uh, anybody want to say anything to us. Are we being too deep? Yeah, I feel deep like or? we've neglected the comments no, we or, or, or the people out there. In the, in the, oh, you got one of the greatest compliments you've ever had. <laughs> Nobody's saying anything, Jay, to be quite honest. Someone <laughs> talking to my brother, um, Jess, you got one of the greatest compliments you've ever had. Somebody said that you sound a lot like me, so... One of the greatest compliments you ever. Every, <laughs> my whole life, I am I am 35. He is I don't know 34 now. Oh, my whole life, they said, are you are you two 35 twins? 35 and 34. That's the difference. Yeah. I think well, so. He, yeah. He right now, I turned 36 July. later this year. But wow, that's a real. That, my whole turnaround. life, they said, are you two twins? And it got to a point where you know me and Trevor would mess with him because we got so sick and tired of of answering that question. We'd say, no, I've never met that guy in my life. But I'd <laughs> Who always said that. I would always enter. Sherry Wade. Oh, I would always introduce myself as the older, better looking brother. And people, yeah. uh, tons of people out in the world agreed. So yeah. back to culture. Sure. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so do you ever, like, I think about people that lived 100 years ago. And um, it's just, you know, what they got to experience. Automobiles and electricity, electricity. a lot of them, mm -hmm. and toilets that flushed. And, you know, some things that, like, nobody ever had. Heating and cooling, you know, basic necessities now that we take for granted they didn't have. Think about our culture. Like, we got to experience... Now, and oh, I'm yeah. serious. So yeah. we're, 
at this age, and, and so you're, you fall in that too, although you're a little older and maybe <laughs> didn't experience it at the level older. that we did. But like, how was it when you discovered so, electricity? So think about it though. <laughs> think about the technology that we've experienced yeah. at this age. Like, I mean, so Nintendo, right? Okay. The concept of Nintendo, Atari, etc., when it came out, insane, right? I can control this thing on the TV. Okay. And now you look at video games, which I'm not really into video games, but when you look at the uh, just unbelievable graphics. graphics and everything, you think about the iPhone. Me and Jenna, when we were dating, we were not even married yet. We were at a Bats game. This guy pulls out the iPhone 1, right? And I don't even remember what it looks like at that point. But he pulls out the iPhone 1 in front of us, and I'm like, oh, he's got the iPhone. Look at this. Like, kind of picking at the guy, because at that point, it's and like, she hey, married you, huh? it, yeah, it's about a $1,000 phone or whatever. At that point, I'm like, oh, this guy, he's got the iPhone. Isn't he cool? Well, now, everybody's got iPhones. And they say, I don't know, but they say that the iPhone has more technology than the guys that launched the first couple of shuttles into space. You know, NASA heard that, read that. Sometimes so, you kind of got to fact check. If you can't quote where that's bit. from, then I don't believe You know what? You can look Sometimes it up. Sometimes you have to fact check James look it up. a little bit. Look so. it up. I need a fact check. Look, right look, look it listen, up and look it up where. Listen, that's not fake news. Sure, look that up. Pretty sure but, Abraham Lincoln, uh, it was in, on the internet. Abraham Lincoln posted that. There you go. Abraham Lincoln? Yes. Well, that's. See, you that's, read that article and believed it. Abraham Lincoln that worked for NASA. <laughs> yes. Anyway, I just, I always, sometimes I sit and I think about the culture and, you know, and with the advances, and I think about people like, you guys don't know, but Reese is here behind the scenes. She does great work every week, supposedly. Thank I'm not you, here Reese. every week, but thank you, Reese, for what you do. But think about Reese's generation and the technology that they're experiencing. Literally, I did read this. I don't know the author. Trevor might be able to tell me. But they said generations are done because stuff's changing so rapidly. There's not even like time to say this is generation whatever because literally it changes that fast. They're not going to lump them in. To Just lump it in because anymore. literally the technology and everything changed. So, I mean, you're, you've, got a, you've got a 2019 Ram Lariat, okay. right? Yeah, you, Sport package edition. You want to give them a license plate number and everything <laughs> <No>. too? <laughs> I, lock, I, you, I lock it up I, at I night, know, folks. Go to YouTube after this. Look up the info, infotainment package on that thing. What, what can you do on that truck, though? Uh, drive it. But I bought it. What can you do? In, like, so the... the how, big's you, a, how big's a con computer screen the day? 20, uh, 20 inch. Something like that, yeah. It's like an iPad it plus, is. and you can change the heating, the cooling, the suspension, yes. the sound of the exhaust. You got 12 different backup cams. Uh, something like that. I don't know about 12. Right? I mean, it's just, I, I think about it, and then I think about like some of these older folk that I love, and I'm not just bashing older folk to say old, but I just think about some of these people that, like, you know... We're happy to get in the car and and drive where they went and, and get there. And now just where we're at today. So Okay, let me ask a question. Culture just it, I, I think about it all the time. Can I ask a question now? Yes. So how has that affected the faith in people? I mean, Christianity, spirituality. Do you see spirituality as growing, developing, becoming bigger and better and brighter okay let me let me flip let me flip it back to okay, you and ask it? you this yeah, one yeah, okay. um with with what's going on in our culture today and how we have transitioned to more well not more but all online services and stuff like that that older generation that probably struggles with the youtubes and the facebooks and stuff like that how do you how do you think they're handling the not being able to go to church on sundays and wednesdays bet, and stuff like that bet, you touch you touch base with more of the congregation yeah, than i do so that's why i'm asking first you. of all that just like the younger generation, I don't think there's a lot of difference generationally in those that really attend the church. They want to be back together, man. Yeah. Yeah. There's no substitute yeah. for that. But what has amazed me and surprised me is the oldest of our people have found ways to get yeah. on YouTube, to get on Facebook, to stay connected. Yeah. I mean, they are yeah. absolutely finding yeah. ways to be connected in their 80s. And it amazes me. You know me why? Because that that's probably the most adaptive group of our entire culture. That group has adapted through everything. So what's what's shutting down my favorite restaurant? I'll yeah, make it work. Shouldn't we you know brag? I mean? on, really, James, that's a good yeah, point. When I you mean, think about, you take some of our guys who are in their seventies and eighties, and we maybe have a few in their nineties. Right. Think about how they have transitioned, transitioned, and adapted their lifestyles to so many different issues, and and, and so this is another adjustment for them. And and I think you'll, you'll find this too as you as you guys get older. And I don't mean to sound old, but you learn you have to adjust. Yeah, I think. I mean, the kids grow up, they go away to school. Oh, man, it's adjustment. They go away to college. 
That's a huge adjustment. They get married, and, and it just goes. That might be a great sick. next episode upcoming is have a guy that is 80, 90 years old that, that can get out and about and have him come talk to us, man. Let's all just tune in and hear what this guy's wisdom is because, you know. Man, I wish. I, I, go ahead, James. I, I, one of my, uh, he's, an, he's an ex, he's a retired truck driver uh, of mine, um, but he still stops in every once in a while and, and to talk to me. Um, just turned 88 years old. Um, back in February, he comes down, and I can I can listen to that man tell stories to the cows come home. Um, he know he he could tell me, and he has a memory on him that you wouldn't believe too. Knows exactly where he was sitting when Pearl Harbor was bombed. Like he remembers sitting there listening to it on the radio. He remembers the great flood of like the 30s. How 37 being, flood. Yeah, like yeah. how he was downtown at at a hotel, and the <clears> water was coming up, and he remembers you know having to cross a plank to get on this bus because they were now getting kicked out of the hotel downtown to go somewhere down in the county. I mean, he has stories. When he, when he, there, used to, there was 13 people in his classroom when he, was, when he was a kid going to school, and they all brought their guns to school, and they <laughs> set it up in the corner because after school was over, they were all going hunting together. And the teacher would hand out cigarettes to them as their treats and stuff, because that's just... <laughs> said cigarettes? That, yes, that's how the teacher would... Because back then, you rolled your own cigarettes. Yeah. And the teacher would roll cigarettes and hand them out to the students and stuff. And that was a okay... You know, all that was okay Oh, practice. absolutely. That was, that was a genuine thing, you know. Do you guys think... You, you, is there respect for that culture? Oh, yeah. I respect I, that culture I, I think tremendously. Is, I think that it's an interesting thing. If you, I think if you listen to the... If you get into... Um, the most mainstream of medias. And what I mean by that is just literally everything everybody's on. You would maybe get the sense that if you're not doing this, you don't have a clue, right? If you look at the Instagrams and the Facebooks and the Snapchats and the TikToks and everything else, you, if you're not living your life this way at this age, you're really missing life. But I'm here to tell you there's a whole lot of people that have grown up with grandparents and older folks like you're talking about. And when you sit and spend five minutes with them and see what they've been through, which most of them will tell you, yeah, I lived out on the barn at, at the farm, and we didn't have any running water, and you know we went mm -hmm. to an outhouse, and my grandma carried five gallon buckets of water to our house every day, and we didn't have a heater or, or, or an AC. And you know, when you listen to people like that, I think there's so many people that relate to that, and and I think well, if we're not careful, we look and we say, well, everybody must be thinking this way, but I'm telling you, there's a whole lot of people especially in our generation in the 30s, that looked at that group and say, man, that group. Man, I'd love to hear that. I, I, yeah. I, I, I love the fact that there's a few people in our audience that are in that age group. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And just to hear somebody in their early 30s say, you know what, we have great respect for you guys. We see where you've been. We know what you've done. And we value your, your opinion. And there may be this common myth out there that our generation doesn't have much respect for you, but that... When it comes See, down to practical experience, it's not there. I don't think it's a common myth, though, because I, I, I would throw into the fact of we would say we respect them, but do we really show it? I think that's the difference. I think if you would ask anyone in, you know, in their 30s or in their 20s, do you respect the elders? I think we would all say yes, but how much do we really show that? How much are we calling them and telling them that? How much are we really seeking out a relationship with them? You know, I remember we, we were talking about this not too long ago, Harry. And I, I can't remember who said it, but we were talking about relationships. I think it was in the conversation of love moves down. Mm -hmm. And we were, we were discussing with, with like people your age and older, do you guys feel cared for or want relationships with the people who are younger than you? And I, do you remember that conversation? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What, what did that person say? Do you remember? I, I don't. Yeah, they felt like... Uh, that generation is not in, interested in having a relationship yep. with them. Yep. They're too busy. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if it's always too busy. And, okay. and I want to be careful. Go ahead, Ben. Go ahead, Ben. I was going to say, I think, you know, a good example um, as, as a younger person, and even as um, I'm, I, I was told the last Saturday I'm not a young person anymore. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Get knocking that. truth Rain to you. Rain on that. Rain on that. that. Yeah. Nice dagger to you in the truth box. The card said you were young once, and that's and that was then or something. But anyway. Um, <laughs> Last Saturday was his birthday. Go ahead, Ben. Oh, okay. I think, uh, Happy birthday, Ben. Thank you. My, uh, how many times have you been on the road and somebody behind, somebody in front of you is driving too slow and you get frustrated and you go to pass them and they're an elderly person? Right. <laughs> I always feel like such a heel when I do, when I. Such a what? Such a what? Like a heel. Yeah, I, it's a good I'm wrestling term. Heel. I, I do feel like a heel. It's, it's, it's a good wrestling term. That's why I called this, you out. This, this is when I feel like a heel. So, anyway, um, but you guys are making me think of my mom, and 
throughout this whole thing, I, you know, she's 89, and I've been um, been over to see her a few times through the glass porch and mm -hmm. on the back, and uh, take her some things she needs, and just trying to, you know, give the things I take her. I, I make her wait till the next day to get them off the porch. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Right. But, but anyway, um, uh, I was just sort of shocked when I first went over there, and she was just calm as a cucumber. Yeah. And yeah. didn't. Didn't seem to think this was any big deal. I'm like, no. well, do you need something? And everybody's like out of toilet paper. Right. And, you know, everybody's freaking out. And she's like, no, I'm good. Yeah. And, and I, you know, what you guys spoke to is spot on where, you know, she's lived through so much in her life. This, you know, this is a big deal for her. Yeah, sure. But, yeah. But it's, she's been through a lot worse. Yeah, a lot worse. Yeah. yeah. And, and experienced things that, that we would consider worse that she's just, that's just the way life oh, was. I, I think I think more of that's been going on too, Ben. Though, where I've talked to some of my friends, where they're doing stuff for Nana and Papa and different people that I've never heard them talk about those folks. But they're like, "Oh, I'm going to cut the grass for Nana," or "I'm going to," you know, people that I talk to regularly. And it's like there has been some of that stepping up where they realize, "Hey, this is something that we want to make sure we're helping these folks out, mm -hmm. and especially the most uh, susceptible group to this." And and I'll give you a tip on the on the old people driving. Uh, typically, I look and see if there's a hanging. Uh, you know, handicap sticker, then you can just back off. If you see, if you don't see that, then you motor around and hope that it's not an old person. Well, my comment uh, was, you know, just want to put yeah. that out there. So. You're, you're, you're driving around with your name and business Gary number Ford, on it. Then, then Gary Ford has. You're one driving around with your name and business number on it. I hope you're driving safe. That's not. I guess, no. I guess my comment wasn't meant to be so negative, but but it's just a challenge for me, especially too. Just just like if we have older people in our lives, like how much are we doing those things? Like James is saying, like I hope we can learn from this season mm. that. We need to keep them, you know, in our thoughts and, and care for them just as much as we care for our friends that are our same age. Does that make sense, Harry? Oh, absolutely. In fact, a couple of quick stories. I don't know. Who would have thought we'd be talking about senior adults tonight? I thought this was supposed to be a funny show. It but, is. Isn't it funny? Well, I'm, sitting, I'm sitting next to you two. I'm rolling. <laughs> just joking. I'm looking at my right James, and left, and uh, I'm rolling. Man, when James was young here in the church, he was enamored with Ethel Clinton's. Yeah. <laughs> Still, I, to, di to this day, uh, God rest his soul, I'm enamored and with Edsel Quiggins. Yeah. With the, I mean, he's an Air Force, Force pilot, and he, and he there was nothing he so couldn't I, do. So, Edsel's story, this is a good one. So, uh, I would go to his house, and up until <clears throat> recently, every gun I ever purchased from Edsel. So, this is what the guy did. And you hear the stories that he would just sit down, and I could sit in his basement in his gun making room where he had all the uh, different bits and parts where he's putting guns together. You know? James in a gun making room. That sounds like a safe <laughs> yeah, story. Yeah, it was good. It was good. But anyway, uh, we were sitting down there and he'd tell you about Air Force and, and yeah. being in the Air Force. He'd still show you his old Colt 45, which he had, that they issued him. And he yeah. said, you're supposed to give it back, but I took it with me. You know, <laughs> some of that stuff. And uh, just a guy that was truly, truly amazing. And then he talked about when he got out of the service, he flew private planes. And, you know, everything's different. The FFA and all that stuff yeah. wasn't quite what it is today. So he said, yeah, we used to fly. And people would ask, hey, can you fly under that bridge? He said, sure. So literally he would take paying customers that he's flying some destination <laughs> underneath, like, bridges, <laughs> right? Like, like I don't know, the Sherman Mitten. And there goes Edsel underneath. <laughs> Sherman right? like, so yeah. it's kind of That's like right. your shotgun story. Just such a different time. And nobody thought, like, oh, well, this yeah. is a bad idea. No, right. let's do it, man. Go under the bridge if you can. Right. So... Just talking to guys like that and just what they did. And then even at in his 80s, when we were up at the apartment and I was a youth pastor at the church and we started in the apartment, we needed some stuff done, some stuff that I didn't know how to do. And, you know, not a lot of people could do, oh, shut yeah. <laughs> that I didn't, wasn't aware of how to do. And so Edsel came over at 80 years old and did it. And it was, I mean, spot on from, it was some craftsman stuff, which he was great at that. The, the best story was, Early in my home inspection career, which I'm a home inspector, if some of you don't know. Dynamite drop in. So if you need a home inspection. Go ahead and plug it. Go ahead and plug it, James. Go ahead and plug it. Yeah, uh, <laughs> ahead and plug it. this card out at yeah. the end. Um, so we'll anyway, roll that in the credits afterwards. So anyway, uh, I'm, at a, I'm at yeah, a property, and uh, it's one of those, the attic space is a scuttle hole in the closet, really tight closet, and I'm thinking, okay, I just want to get in, at least get my head up there. Well, uh, the way they'd framed it in, it looked like solid two-by-fours all the way around. Unfortunately, half of it was just drywall only, and the two by four was laying there. It wasn't actually secured in. So I went up with one big hand to get my head up in there, and literally this lady's whole closet ceiling oh, fell right in. Oh, 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 so that's an embarrassing thing. And she was elderly, and Wish we had you that know, that's show. an embarrassing thing. So you're like, no, no, well, no. I just uh, 
collapse your closet. Like, you know, <laughs> so anyway, I was like, I'll take care of it. You should have just wrote it up like you did. You should have just wrote it up. Yeah, yeah closet fell in while I was there. Exactly. In her home inspection, she has a failed closet because of collapse. The story gets better if she was standing right there. It was termite damage in your closet. Yeah, exactly. And not James Curry damage. Anyway. This is a great plug, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Great for your home inspection. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The phones, here, the man. phones are ringing off the hook now. Finish your story. So anyway, Edsel, uh, I was looking for somebody just. And I had other guys doing drywall work, but I knew Edsel could do it, and I knew it was available, which was also key. And I needed it like the next day because I told this lady I'd take care of it, so we'd get everything squared away, and they could close on the house, etc. So Edsel came out there, 80 plus something years old. I bought the drywall and all the mud and everything else. He helped me do it you know i probably could have done it this guy done it a hundred times right and not only was it a great bonding time with him but literally we did it couldn't tell it was ever damaged he you know we spoke to the lady that was there and everything and it was just that's one of many edsel stories but you know i've got some others that are funny that i'm not going to share tonight here's so. the here's the cool thing about that harry i think about this is what i think about when james tells us great stories about a man mm. that he only reason he knows edsel is because of what church yeah he's in the church and, and yeah. so i wonder like yeah. in in my life i look back on some of the the best relationships i have even currently um with with elderly people who can give you so much knowledge and encouragement oh, yeah. and wisdom that you can never even attain in your life but you, you have to tread lightly on on the elderly and say their say. names and stuff so that's why i was, I was about to drop like, a name yeah i was like you gotta be you know hey let the man finish okay you guys. but i'm just saying finish. like whose show is this it's mine okay don't you forget it either i've lost my train of thought now. there you Thanks. go yeah but but just saying like the reason why i can say and james can say he has those relationships because of the church because right. he's committed to be at the church to to want to form those relationships because otherwise i don't know how outside of your own personal grandparents do you have other relationships with you know trev some of the most impacting churches in the world honestly and this is this is not a comparison i don't mean to be negative all you get a small church where there's 60 people 80 people right and every kid knows every senior adult and it's like they are at, when they have a get together everybody's there now we've gotten so um our churches are so large and it's good it's meaningful it's positive i'm but the kids get together and the teens to get together yeah. and the young adults get together and the, yeah. and the young marrieds get together and the middle-aged adults get together and you don't have that multi-intergenerational experience as sometimes you have well smaller church had to have that every time because that's all that's, that's all know, they had that's all they had to do yeah. but it ended up being so formative for for all, all, every age group especially for young people to grow up around I've an older i've always older not, not like to cut that. your point off no, but i've always ahead, find it i always found it funny if we did a little twist when we go back to actually meeting on Sundays is if you guys come in and did assigned seating and place people in groups next to people that they normally don't sit around and get a mixture of you know the elderly with the young and stuff like that. Six would, feet apart. Would, would people, <laughs> well I said when we come back, would, would, yeah. would, would people freak out and, and, and just turn around and go home or would they actually sit down in their seat? Uh, most of our people Because if you, as, as you know, I mean it's almost like a sign seating in this in, in, in on Sunday morning. I think that's for every church. It is. It's for every. It's not just our church. It is for every church. That's not a new thing. You know. If, no. If you ever visited like the the, the uh, church up in Boston where uh, Paul Revere hit out, I guess. Oh yeah. Whatever, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The British are coming. You know, all of the all of the pews have people's names on. Family names. Yeah. Blacks because they. Yeah. I think they had to actually buy the pews. So right. Is that so, right? So I don't know. We're not buying them anymore and putting our names on them like we used to. Uh, it, it, it's it's kind of funny. Is we still yeah. kind of everybody. Well, has their Trevor, own. Trevor and I grew up Catholic, and we went to we went to Catholic mass every Sunday morning. And I'm telling you right now, we did not sit anywhere but the same seats every Sunday morning with my mother. Yeah. It never never changed. You know, I do think there's another side of this equation we should talk about just a second, and that is the monkey is also on the back of older people. To get yeah. over some of their prejudices and, hey, you know, your hair's too long or he's got two earrings, man, or whatever. You know, just the monkey's on our back to, uh, to love down, man, to just say, right. hey, I, I learned a great lesson a few, a few weeks ago. and We were in uh, Isaiah chapter 5 about the sons of Jacob. And I really learned something that's been meaningful to me I'll never get over, and that is parents love their kids more than the kids love their parents. Mm. It, just, it has to be that way. Say that know? again. Parents love their kids more than kids love their parents. Mm. If I didn't love James, if James had to love me as much as I love him, he'd still be living at home. 
He'd be up in Amen. that little bedroom upstairs. Amen. And he'd be eating at our table. And he'd be in at the time I want. And we'd be, he'd be right there doing every little. But because he could love beyond that, and he fell in love with Jenna, he moved out, he's on his own, you know. And so it's really, it's, it's really a, I, I believe there's a biblical precedent for an older generation to fall deeply in love with the younger generation, even though the inner, younger generation does not return it in the same measure. Yeah. And you, may, you can disagree with that if you want. Go ahead, I agree ben. with that, and I think I would add to it, when it's not working that way, it, you know, so when the children love the parents more than the parents love the children, which that happens, mm -hmm. it's very broken. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, that's a good yes, that's that's a great point. That's great. I never thought about it from that angle. That's a great point. So that we, we're, we're literally challenged as parents, and you guys in this room, either our parents or you will be parents someday. I want to encourage you. To, don't forget, it's helpful to realize because one day little Johnny's going to go to the first grade and it's a hard day, man. And then high school and it's a harder day. And then they're going to leave for the university and you think you're going to die. Yeah. You know, and, uh, but it's good. And then they it's almost, right. and then so you got to go get them. Yeah, so, so switching gears once more. Well, hold on. I got, I got a yeah, call. Right. So um, Harvey Smith, God bless him. God bless oh, you, Harvey Harv. Smith. Uh, yeah. Yeah. He, he's dropped a comment in on this, and he says, bridging the gap is a lost art these days with young and elderly. So, so I think we could agree with that to some extent. So, Harry, let's talk just for a moment about how do we help that out, not only as a church but just in life in general. Like, what do we do with that? Man, you know, I try to do that. I, first of all, I'm not real good, Harvey, with uh, – with getting the whole church to do that. I, 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 I want to tell you, my plate is full with me, you know, and, I, and I, that's terrible. I should be a better organizer. I'm not a great leader. But, man, I think the number one thing is just love them. Man, if you're in love with young people, it's just not hard. I don't understand. I think it's intentionality. It is intentional. If you're not intentional about it, you won't do it. And, you know, back to me and Edsel, as intentional as Edsel was about speaking to me every time I saw him, I was intentional about going to his house, you know, and same is true. And man, I wish other, Jim Quiggins were watching this. Some other, yeah, somebody text Jim Quiggins. Sure, you need to be some on. other, some other relationships, same way, you know, and even as older and younger people, I mean, because it's not to think that it's going to be totally natural. These relationships, well, it won't be, is not no. correct, but to think that they can't happen is also incorrect because reality is you learn so much from these other groups. I mean, uh, being the youth pastor for 12 years here, I learned all sorts of things, and I would say words that I would learn and find out three years later nobody says that anymore, you know? <laughs> but, like, I, I think some of that relationship was... It people took you, it took people you would say, weeks. people would say, yeah. yeah. People say, well, that's not natural. Why are you hanging out with an 11-year-old? Well, it's an intentionality thing, man. Like, you understand, and the same is true for anybody that's in any sort of ministry. The intentionality, and as Christians, we're all called to be in some sort of ministry, and so the intentionality that you have to use in everyday life for these relationships to go forward is huge. And um, I think the more people could do that, you know, and maybe hopefully the hope is that when all this is over, that maybe there is a sense of, man, I need to do that because yeah. I realized what it was not able to do when, when this time was going on. So I, I want to try to do more. Let's of that talk now. about that. I'm going to yeah. turn it over to Jesse. Let's talk about Jesse. Let's talk about James's call on us to be intentional in expressing our love and concern and relationship to others. Talk about being intentional. I mean being intentional. Well, when he was just talking about that, my, the first thought I had in, in my head was that first Sunday when we come back to Norma, yeah, like it, it, people are going to be here for hours because they're, be. they're not going to, they're, they're not, they're, norm, they're used to the normalcy of Sundays and shaking hands and saying hello to yeah. the ones they want to say hello to. But I think. You think people show up early? I think, pe yes, absolutely. And I, hey, and we'll I have think, lots of donuts that yes, day, Yeah, we need I to think, have lots. I think people are going to say hello mm -hmm. to um, others that they not normally say hello to just because of the um, distance that they had. Mm -hmm. And even this, what you're doing here on Tuesday nights and Fridays, bridges that gap also. Because there's people like me that are in there exchanging comments with people that I normally don't talk to Harvey. even on Sunday. Oh, Harvey. Harvey. Yeah. Yeah. Harvey. 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 Man, Harvey, you've been wonder, a huge Wonder if Ed Decker's on there. Yeah. 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 Give, us some, more, give us some more, Trev. Who, Patty, who else is right there? Patty says, if it weren't for an older generation, I would not have known how to love down. Um, we learn by example, and I have been blessed to have so many people who influence me as a younger person. That's, man, you can't miss who, that. Who, who are some me? people that influence you, Jay? Who are some, some people, people that influence at me? At this church specifically, who are some people that have influenced your life, briefly? 
Harry Curry easily is, is an easy answer. Um, Jeremy Duranso is another one. Yeah. Um, big time Jeremy Duranso. Um, a little bit of Arnold Wilson, but I wasn't around him a lot. I was more around uh, Jeremy Duranso and stuff. So him, I tell you another one, and I love any time I ever get a chance to talk to him, and I actually get to talk to him every week because he texts me, is Dave Kaplinger. Man yeah. is absolutely full of knowledge. Like yeah, I can pick his brain. Well, he texts you every week? Every week he texts me and, and checks on me. Every week. And, and we exchange a couple text messages back and forth, but just that text message conversation I have with him um, it makes my day because you can pick that man's brain about anything, whether it be yeah. pro baseball, whether it be he horse racing, Yankees. whether it be the Yankees, <laughs> yeah. whether, it, whether it be about engineering, anything. That man is, is full of knowledge. What about horse racing? He's, he, he's, he's pretty good. I, I, I lean on him a little bit on the horse racing, um, so he, he's pretty good. But, but I think the uniqueness of that is the fact that Dave cares. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Like, you have respect for someone who's older than you because they care about you. You know, go ahead, Trey. No, that's good. I, I no, but you know, no, I, I think, I think it's, it's true of many of us. We yeah. care, too. That Lots of people care, but somehow you've got to take that you got to take that little step and, and demonstrate that you care, you know, yeah. just like it's really sweet. Uh, Mort Logston came home today. He's been a part of our church. Uh, I've been his pastor as long as I've been in Louisville. In fact, he helped me move in. Pulled his back oh, wow. playing football <laughs> the day we moved into Louisville, which was 33 or 4 Mort, years ago. Mort playing football. Mort playing football. Yeah. Time. Mort playing football. football. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Mort. It was terrible. <laughs> some no, of my, some of my favorite. is pulling the back. What's that? What was terrible? His football skills? Or his his football oh, skills right. were terrible. Some some of, welcome home, Mort. Some welcome of my home. favorite memories was Sunday nights. We used to play football oh, oh, in the front goodness. yard. Oh, the women goodness. got to a point where they would just come and set their lawn chairs up and oh, bring man. like hot dogs and cookies. Yeah. And some older guys the and younger lines. guys would just be out there playing. Larry, it, Larry Borders tanked the guy one night. Yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah. man. No, was, not Larry Borders. Yeah, he did. But, yeah, but I also realized, like, you can have care for someone, but I think the specialness of that is the fact that Jesus is what gives us that, that ability to, to think and be intentional, James. Is that yeah. right? I know yeah. that's a little cheesy. I, I, I know. But, but I, think, no, no, no. I think that's, that for me, that's, that's what really gives you that ability to care for someone because Jesus is love right? God is love. And so because he shows us how to do that, we, we can turn that over and give that to others. I, I've got a brand new, uh, for me, I get something new, got a brand new understanding, I think this week, maybe last week, say my primary obligation toward other people, the number one thing I need to do more than anything else toward other people is see them like Jesus sees them. Mm. Everything else will flow out of that. Yeah. I mean, I'll yeah. give to them, I'll share with them, I'll be kind to them, I'll be gentle with them. But if we can just see them through his eyes, you know, man, it, it makes all that. But I do believe churches like ours and those that are watching from some other churches are full of people that care. But we don't say it enough. We don't say it straightforward enough. Yep. We don't, you know, uh, we don't demonstrate it enough. And yet our hearts are full of it, man. They are absolutely full of it. And and we need to challenge ourselves to say, James, say, be intentional. Just do it. On another it. note. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Totally different note. Go okay. Ahead. One thing the coronavirus has done for me. Okay. okay. Drum roll, please. Is your, I think I know the answer, but what? Is it what we just discussed before we went live? Yeah. It's kind of disgusting if you want to share that, but we're going right ahead. So. Because <laughs> yeah. I'm so, sure your wife is what happens when great on. minds Wait meet. Wait a minute. This is my show. Don't forget. I don't know if you can <laughs> zoom in, but... Oh. Um, yeah. You really want to do For it? the first time in my life. Okay. Are you really zooming in? Maybe yeah. don't zoom in. For the first time <laughs> in my in life. on your forehead. I have fingernails. <laughs> Meaning, I have not bit my fingernails during this time. Now, I can't promise it's going to last when this is all over. <laughs> Reese is laughing. Yes, Reese. I have fingernails. <laughs> so you're telling, me, you're telling me you're not biting your fingernails from fear of the coronavirus? Right. I think in the beginning that was the case. I, you know, I'm, I can feel myself urging, though, and starting to say, I want to bite my finger. Not that I want to. Anybody that bites your fingernails knows it's not like... It's a nervous habit. It's a nervous, it's a nervous habit. habit. Yeah. So, and it's not because I'm nervous. It's just because it's something you do. Right. Keep telling yourself weird, that. It's a weird yeah, keep feeling, telling yourself yeah, I'll, for say, real. I'll say, though, <laughs> fingernails are great for a couple things. If I drop a penny on the ground, 
pick it up. You know what I had to do before? Like get it up against a wall and hope I could get it up. <laughs> for a penny. For a penny. <laughs> for, a you know, for a penny. James, uh, James come on. You're stopping to pick up a penny. a penny. I'm not believing that. You're not picking up pennies. Right, maybe a quarter. <laughs> but if any okay. sort of thing like I'll, that I'll falls that. on the ground. Okay. So I just want to say fingernails are great if, uh, if you don't have fingernails. And that also transitions us. No, wait a minute. Ben's got something to say. Yeah, go ahead. Ben. Oh, I hope just, it's about fingernails. No, it's not. It's totally different. Stuff. Okay, that's good. You're all right. I was going to go back to Morton just for a second. Yeah, oh, okay. please do. So, uh, it took me a minute. I was, you know, we were talking about it a minute ago, but um, I did get the pictures I took. And so, unfortunately, you all won't be able to see them. Okay. Uh, we, don't, we didn't turn all the screens on, but um, I can show everybody else sure. at home. Oh, please yeah. do. So, so um, today was day 64, I think. Hey, we can that's see right. that. Okay. That's right. Track, don't. What is today? Today, Monday? Tuesday? Today's Tuesday. 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 Three, four. I'm so short. I don't know. 64, I'm going to say. Maybe 65. But uh, so, short. so, he, so short. he came home today uh, from the hospital. So so let me, let me, I mean, uh, it's just like children. Switch to that. So there's, that's, that's the sign that the church hey, uh, yeah. 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 the house. And, um, uh, you know, he, that's the first thing he saw when he turned wow. the corner. That's so, wild. Um, and I think Ramona, Ramona is terrible. Those that know her uh, at keeping secrets. Yeah. But, uh, but I think she might have actually kept this one. Oh, wow. Good so for you, Ramona. You know, Ben, we were going to post signs all over the yard thinking he was coming home on Friday. And I had people asking me, can I come and get a poster board? Can I? I'm like, yeah. I'm sorry he's messed the plan up. He's coming yeah. home today. Well, you know, yeah. go ahead, Ben. I think for today, this sign was perfect because the wind was blowing about uh, 80 miles an hour. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know yeah. it, even with the two by fours. I don't know how deep you put those in the ground. But I man, did it with a sledgehammer. It, it was holding, buddy, and uh, it, it, but it was moving. Here's now a, you got to go get him back out of the yard. Uh, Ramona and Morton together there, too. So, to see uh, that, but, that's uh, great. Yeah, so anyway, just uh, everybody that's been praying for him, I just um, – just want to thank you. Yeah, um, absolutely. I was weird in this whole deal because I didn't talk to him until yesterday, and uh, <clears throat> for the first time, because I, I told him, I said, I, I don't know what I, I don't know what I'm going to say, and then, so I just didn't call you. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wait a minute. And, what, and, I think we've been talking about him, yeah. haven't we? And, okay. and, it, and then it got like, well, I don't, you know, I don't know, um, you know. That's been too long, so I don't want to call you because it's embarrassed as long it's been. And I'm, and I'm like, okay, I gotta call him. And so, and uh, and, and I, as soon as he said hello, I started bawling. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. And then he's like, oh, you gotta stop that. I'm gonna start crying. <laughs> like, anyway, he's just uh, he's he's very aware of where he is now, like meaning how fortunate he is and right. God's blessed That's him. Right. Absolutely. And uh, so you can be baking stuff here soon. Uh, <laughs> Mort, if you're watching, yeah. baby steps. Yeah. I know you're day one in, but uh. <laughs> <laughs> I know he asked everybody to, to put a list together. And I don't know if he remembers that, but but he asked me yesterday. He said, uh, "I'm wondering, you know, why why am I going to be making stuff for everybody when I'm yeah? It should be the other way around. Know, shouldn't shouldn't people yeah. be making stuff? For Absolutely, me? Yeah. It shouldn't be the other way around. <laughs> nah, yeah. I think he's got. But uh, uh, you know, he was kidding. But but I. I'll uh, make him whatever he wants. This is going to be terrible. Oh, yeah. yeah, nobody wants that. <laughs> Yeah. So, Good. But I think you know they're they're uh, they have to be really careful now. Sure. Uh, yeah. In the, at least the weeks that follow, just Absolutely. to give his body additional time to get strong and the immune right. system to recover and and uh, so. But just I just wanted to share that. And That's just great. Thank, thank you for thank giving you us that picture, Ben. Yeah. That's fabulous, man. Such a special time. So, wow. So speaking of whatever you want. Okay. What, what we got here? What, what's going on? We've paper we, here in front no, of us. There's me, paper in front Trevor, of us. Do we have time to play a game? Yeah, we've got, we got time. We don't. We don't. We, we have a list of questions here. We don't. We can always save it for another time if we ever do get invited back. I don't know what the ratings are going to be for now. this episode. <laughs> I'm yeah, sure the ratings are through the roof. Through the ratings are through the roof. Before we play, I need to know. Uh, there's some questions that we have, and uh, I need to know how this is going to happen. I uh, think pizza. Pizza this time. Okay. Goes to I the heard winner. big money was on the line. Well, I think I think this time, Cause just because it's going to be short. Time restraints. Because okay. we don't want to wear people out. Pizza. Right. So you, you guys whoever already, wins the game okay. gets a pizza delivered to their home. That's correct. Tonight. Am I available to win this game? No. Okay. We're going to go that. Thanks and it's for not a little Caesars hot and ready. Why not? Because. Okay. So what are we, what are we talking about there, big let's dog? Say, let's say tomorrow night because some people may have already had dinner. Okay. Yeah, it's about 8 o'clock. Could sure we let them choose? Yeah, they can choose. I'll okay, give good. you that. I'll you give can you let that. them choose. Okay. Now, wait a minute. First of all, how are we going to pay for this pizza? 
I have no problem at all paying okay, for the pizza. Okay, Jesse's paying for the pizza. I have no good. problem at all paying for I'm not pizza. paying for the pizza. You know, this is <laughs> I will pay for the pizza, hey, world. I will pay hey, for your pizza. Hey, Save ben, me a slice. Ben, though. help me out here. This is not the season the church pays for anything extra. No, <laughs> yes. I will, I will step up. I got if my anything, stimulus. I got my stimulus. Really? Absolutely, yeah. Oh, I got wow. my stimulus. If anything, I should have been the plug for our online giving platform. Yeah, Absolutely, yeah. This would be a good time to uh, just when, remind everybody. Jay, just give your number uh, out for the text line. Winner of this gets to donate to the to the online giving. Oh, wait a minute. Well, you're right. Just so, go ahead and get on our so, website. So how do they win? How do they win the game? They text in the answer. Yeah, we're just gonna we're gonna try this out. It's a trial okay. run. Okay. Just to see how they we can do like this. They text a number, or how does this work? They'll text the answer to and the, the first to the question. To what are we texting? The Facebook Who screen? No, they're gonna chat it in the Facebook. In the Facebook. Is yeah. somebody keeping? So if you're on YouTube, pull out your phone. Okay. And get on the Facebook chat. Okay. Do people do this on YouTube too? Is this a YouTube thing? People yes. Yeah, people yes, can is. see this on YouTube, but yeah. they don't usually look at the chat. YouTube. Most of the chat happens is on, on Facebook. Facebook. Yeah. We're, we, so we're only working on the morning guy. We're only working yeah. on the Facebook portion here. So yeah, if you're on Facebook so rules, right now, so the rules and the rules and regulations Facebook. are yeah. somebody is uh, it's going to be quick trigger people who are going to put the answer in the comment section. Right. First person to get it right. To get it right, and the first person I guess to answer it. Is, is yeah, it'll, it'll be correct answer and how many questions first do you want? Person. How many questions you want to shoot for? We'll determine. We we'll determine that. We'll just okay. start. Let's start. Are you going to keep track just, of who's? Harry's a scorekeeper. We got okay. it worked out. We got this. The tech guy's going to remind you guys. It takes them. They're they're about 25, 30 seconds right. behind us. Right. A little bit of a so, delay. So we'll have to ask a the delay. question sure. and then okay. give them time to answer. So don't do a rapid we, fire we, on them. Don't overload them. We don't know who answered right until maybe a little bit later. So. Yeah. Okay, just for the fun of it. I because don't like all these questions. We, I, I said we have 24 I love, questions. I love so here's what we're going to do. You can pick any Reese. question you want. No, we're going to bring Reese in. Reese, without looking at the questions, what, should, what number is the first question between 1 and 24? 1 and 24. Give us a number, Reese. Does she have a microphone? She doesn't have to. She's she just tells out. us. 1 one to 24. Five. Number 5. 5. Okay, Jesse, Here number 5. Here we go. Five. Get ready. No Google. We're going to use the honor system and, okay. and try not to Google. Yeah, right. Good luck there. People on their phones. Question number 5, Ben. As you, now, are they seeing that on the screen as well? So, okay. So, the question is, <clears throat> in my best Alex Trebek impression, how many islands make up the state of Hawaii? How many islands make up the state of Hawaii? Sean Connery. <laughs> now, now wait, we, we're there about there are a few seconds behind. A few seconds behind. So, yeah. so, so you guys got to gab a little bit. We yeah. can oh, gab, huh? He's going to tell us the gab. Sean I did. Saturday Night Live. What makes an yeah. island an island? Uh, what water. makes an island an All island? I would be yeah, that would be water surrounding a, a, a peninsula mass. is only three three sides. three sides. That's right. Were well, you trying to like st you're Florida, trying to stump you know, us too over here? Florida is opening up the beaches. No, I don't think so. They're flying drones and things, but. Okay, we're so so because it's coming in listen. now. The, the right answer has not come in yet, though. Oh, the wow. right answer is not there. Still yet. Thank, wow. you, thank you, man. So the right answer has not come in yet. We've I don't know if I should be worried. We've got some it's answers. A hot, and, hot and ready pizza. I don't. I don't know if I should be worried. We should have got you a box, Jay. I know. I'm, I'm, <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> we'll work on that next time. Next time I'm here, I'm going to grow six inches somehow. Okay, you're going to do the. So that's another thing on the documentary. Pardon me. He said. The next time he's here. <laughs> maybe, maybe I should clarify that uh, the answer that's on our answer sheet has not come in. <laughs> that's right. I, yeah. I don't know where these answers came from. You know, that's what, true. we could go with an easier one if this is too So hard. we will go to the producer who come up with the answers to these questions. Wait a minute. Has anybody considered using Google? We said you're not supposed yeah, to use you, Google. Paige, oh, you might want to fact check at this here. at this point at this point right Let's now. Let's move on to the uh, no, to no, the next no. One. We have we got to get good, an answer. That was a, of all the questions here. That was a terrible. Well, she just guessed. Reese is the one that gave hey, us the negative she Nancy. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, negative Ned, calm down up there. Yeah, there's just a lot of good questions here that people there's might tons. actually well, know. Well, James, get ready for your next question, yeah. sir. Okay, wait a minute. It's not Reese's fault. She didn't have paper. What kind of answer? Okay, we're moving. All right, that was our warm-up question. We're going to move on because nobody's okay. got it. Yet. Can I give them the answer, or are we going to wait, we're going to wait for yeah, later? Yeah, go ahead and give the answer. Well, the correct answer on how many islands make up the state of Hawaii is eight. Eight. Now, I don't know so, if that's correct because my, my producer gave me the list of questions <laughs> right. and the answer. Next question. Could, so, be, could be wrong. Well, Next question. Who never knows? Um, 18. Number 18. 18. Am oh, I going, or you want to read it? Mr. Sean Connery. What a, like, go ahead. I didn't it's even yours. read that there when you I go. said that. It's yours. Look into that camera and read it. I'll help you out. <laughs> Which one was it? 18. 18. Okay. The, how, how many films did Sean Connery play James Bond in? Once again, how many films did Sean Connery play James Bond in? 
Well, this is working out pretty good because I'm able to get it up on the screen faster than you can read it. So by the time Absolutely. you read it, <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, no, I, right. quick, hey, I'm not a very then, good reader. And then, if he, like, and then if he butchers a question, people could see it on the screen while he's butchering the question. Ben's, Perfect. Ben, is there any, should I give any kind of clue? It's a number between 1 and 10. That's our clue. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, the clue is it's a number between 1 and 10. The right answer is in. The right, right answer ah. is in. And from, from who? who? Joe Federley. Big Joe! Joe Federley! Big Joe. Joe. Oh, Joe Federley on the board first right, I want to give the clue Joe? of 007, but I don't That would have given it away. Yeah, that would have given it away. Shout out to Joe. Joe Federley. All right, Jess, give, give us the next question there. Jess, give us the next question. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Okay. Reese is helping us. Reese, what Reese, number? Reese is going again. Choose a good one, Reese. Number 10. 10. Thank you, Reese. Oh, good one. This is a generational thing. I, I like think this, is, this okay. is. You guys have to read. Go ahead and read. This it. one's going to be a tough one, um, and I will be shocked if the if the right answer comes in. In the original arcade version of Donkey Kong, Mario was not a plumber. What was his occupation? In the original version, the arc the arcade version <laughs> of Donkey Kong, Mario was not a plumber. <laughs> what occupation was he? <laughs> Not as easy as it looks, is it? Joe Federley gave us like bonus points for that last is question. Is that right? He said the seven. The list of movies? He said seven, including the non official first one in 1983. I'd say Joe Federley is probably a James Bond fanatic. I'd, I'd say so. And I think he's going to get accurate. some pizza. Maybe, because right now he's the only person on the board. Probably the only person watching. We <laughs> <laughs> have, have the right answer from Ramona Logsdon. Oh, no. Correct right. answer? For the next question. Oh, oh. What, she got it? She got it? Ramona's on the board. No. Oh. All right, Reese, let's go. We got to keep this rolling. The answer was a carpenter. A carpenter was the answer. Carpenter. Not from the musical group. Number 16. Oh, you're going to like this one, all you people that paid attention in school. All right. Number 16. Very quickly, type. What is your body's largest organ? Organ. What? <laughs> what? Hold on. What? James, you're what? fired. You're not reading what anymore. Is, what organ? is? What is your body's largest organ? That was what we call a swing and a miss on your part. Hey, I'm trying to throw them off. That's an easy question. All right, we got the right answer. Ben oh, Johnson. Ready? Who we got? Ben right? Johnson. Ben Who? Johnson in the building. Ben, ben Johnson's Johnson. in the house. Congratulations. Or it's probably, let's be honest, that's probably Tara, his wife. I was going to yeah. say, Because they have a shared account, and ben I'm going to probably Google give that, that to Tara. Okay, for sure. no ben time for that. that Three ways time. Reese. Reese. All right, next person. Go. Reese, what number? Seven. Number seven. Seven. Noah said liver. Was that a joke about Noah? Like, it's not number even seven. close, Noah. Come on. You jazz. That might be the largest internal organ. I don't know. Question number seven. Which well, gospel in the Bible is written by a doctor? Quickly and correctly. So which somebody's going to have to answer more than one of these to get the pizza. Absolutely, because right. we have a three-way tie right now. Oh, okay. Yeah, we'll figure that three-way out. Three-way tie because there's only been three questions. Correct. Well, three right, correct right. answers right, also. Good. Can you read the question? Absolutely. Before I was rudely interrupted. Which gospel in the Bible is written by a doctor? Okay, we got a right answer. We have a right answer. Three, oh, three. Benita Berry on Benita the board. Benita Berry is ben, on the board. Wow. Well, that two. was the Gospel of ben Luke. Plus two. I don't, I don't. The Gospel. Pizza is on the way. Of Luke. What, what question now? What question, Reese? Thank you, Reese. Number well, twelve. Was that hers or was that your it suggestion? Was him. I was wondering why he was going ten yeah. plus two. Right, like he listen, didn't know how to do going. math or Maybe something. Maybe you didn't get any other questions right. You should get this right. They could have been late turning in. Michael Jordan played for the Chicago Bulls. How many NBA championships did he win? Go. Yes. Of course. My producer is looking at me now He's asking me if that was correct. Who? Well, that, I, maybe if his name is Kobe said, Bryant. I said that. All right, all right, all right. Maybe if his name's Kobe Bryant. <laughs> yeah. I said that answer because I didn't want to give away spoilers to the documentary. Yeah, the right answer is in. Uh, Am I going to be shocked? Who got it? Bradley Luke in the house. Bradley, Bradley Luke, in the house. yeah. Okay. Bradley Luke. I don't. I think I'm going to buy and like six different pizzas. Everybody's been on Brad about not being a sports guy his his whole time on the district. Well, he's self. And Brad comes in. I was in the garage answer. building motorcycles. Okay. Uh, I feel like Reese. I'm about to buy six different pizzas. Reese, what number? 22. Number twenty-two, James. Next twenty-two. Ooh, this is a good. Twenty-two. One. I like this. What a Wonderful World is a jazz song first recorded by which American singer? I see skies of blue. Oh, oh that's boy. it. Oh. That's it. Heavens oh, above. It's like a cat died in here or something just now. Oh. You know you like it. Guys, I apologize. Whew. Next week we'll go back are to you something guys, more normal. Are you guys marking these yeah. off so we don't? Yeah. I am. Absolutely not. I forgot to do that. I am. You know what else he starred in? Was which? 
Hello, Dolly. You ever seen that one? Also, right the answer's up there. Right answer's in. Who right is answer's it? Brad Luke coming in. No Brad way. Luke coming hey. in. Hey. No Good job, way. Brad. Brad says, sorry, give me my pizza. No Everybody tell us the answer. And the answer is? Do we deliver? Louis, Louis Armstrong. Armstrong. Louis Armstrong. I delivered a pizza. Hello, Dolly. I delivered a pizza to Florida the other day. It's so me, we're good. Dolly. Okay, guys. So, Brad Luke now has two correct answers. That's right. It's my He's show. in the lead. Remember? Okay. Yeah. All right, good. Brad Luke Reese. is in the lead. Which one? Number one. Got it. Okay. What type of car and color hit the fire hydrant? <laughs> so you got to be pretty local for this, Brad. <laughs> what type of car? You have to be car? a follower of the show also. Well, yeah, and you have to drive around Blanton Lane a lot. What type of car and color hit the fire hydrant a couple of weeks ago back during the Hanging with Harry? Just a couple weeks ago? What, Just, two, three weeks ago? Can, can you keep reading the question? Okay, I'm sorry. Just <clears throat> I didn't do that wrong. No, what type of your car English was and color hit the fire hydrant a couple of weeks ago? I think it's poorly written. Back during the Hanging with Harry. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. It's a what little kind of car picture. hit the fire hydrant? So we need, we need the, the make was, and the color. What was the color and type of car that ran over a fire hydrant on Blanton Lane? We got a lot of wrong answers in the, the chat, Ben. the middle of Hanging with Harry about well, approximately three weeks ago. We've got some answers, but they're still time. not correct. The right answer is there, but you'd have to combine some of the other <laughs> That's right, Ben. We're Thank looking you. for Okay, the, we're going to put a time frame on we're this. We're looking for the model of the car Let's and the color of one. the car. Let's go to Let's give them 15 seconds, Trev. i got 15 seconds. Model? You guys got to be patient over there. 1975 Trans Am Blue. Hey, Joe Dirt, that's not Pearl the answer. Pearl white interior. <laughs> Plum purple crazy. That ain't the answer. <laughs> With the Bigfoot gas yeah. pedal. I thought you said you had a Hemi. Okay. <laughs> We're going to the next, but because... All right, because Harry's in charge, we'll move on. That's right. Nobody that's got the exactly right answer. This is right, hanging with Harry, not hanging with J&J. I think we should deduct a point from well, Brad Luke for now. No, no, let me give a clue. Let me, let me give a Mustang. clue. I like number eight. Let me give you a yeah. clue. Somebody should get this after this. Dodie Hollis has one. Oh, I ruined it already. Sorry, I didn't know you were going to do that. <laughs> oh, you ruined it already? Did you already get the answer, yeah. Ben? Hopefully, Dodie would have got oh, that. Are, are you talking about this car? I'm no. talking about this car. Yeah, We're, I ruined it already. Okay. That's okay. Oh, you ruined it already? Okay. Ben's trying to sneak in there with a point. Reese, this is a good one. Number eight, Reese. Number Say number eight. eight if you want. Okay, Reese. Number, number eight. eight. Awesome. How many bones does an adult human have? How yeah. many bones does yeah. an adult human have? I don't know where that's coming from. Jenna Curry, you watching? You better respond. She's probably not watching. How many bones kids in bed and wishing does an adult too, human probably. have? I, this is going to sound... People are really confused It's not on as hydrant. big a number as I thought. Everybody this was is, saying yellow because I thought it was that was what the new number. hydrant was. i got to be honest with you. I, should, in I shouldn't one. say this because it looks bad on my part. Then don't say it. But you're telling me that adults... Tara Johnson on the board again ah, with the correct answer. What does she do for a living? She's in the medical field, right? right. And how many... She's a... Bones are in, nurse? Or in the human body? The answer is 206, according to my producer. All right, Reese, throw a number out there. 206. Adult Somebody has brought their A game charge? tonight. Ooh, 19 is going to be... 17. Number 19 is going to be fire when we get 17 there. 17 is what we're going with? Yeah. Who wrote and performed the song, Staying Alive? And I have a bonus question Who? for this. No, we get don't. Two points. Get out of yes, here. Staying Alive. Bonus Staying question. Alive. Who wrote and performed the song, Staying Stay Alive? alive. Kind of a a ironic. Corona. Ben, that's right up your curve. What was that? Late seventies, <laughs> early eighties. <laughs> kind of an ironic. Great season for that. Staying alive, baby. Alive. Stay, alive. Stay, alive. Stay, alive. Stay alive. The bonus question is: Caleb Route in the building. Who? Caleb Route. Yeah. Did he get it? He got it. The Caleb Route is in the building. The but does Caleb? Does Brad Caleb, Luke? Brad Luke was Caleb a moment Brad, so too late on that one. It, it must be. Does Brad Luke? Somerset watched this. All right, there's uh, the bonus. Give the bonus, Jess. Does Brad Luke or anybody else out there? That song was written and performed for a hit movie by John Travolta. Who was the director of that film? Oh, good. Very man. famous. No, listen to me. Very famous man that everybody should know. Steven shocking, Spielberg. Shocking. Shocking that this man actually directed this movie. Steven Spielberg. Hmm. I've never every, seen the movie. Every man, especially if you live in the city of Philadelphia, should know who this man is. Rocky Balboa. Somebody says whatever Brad Luke says. Is it Rocky Balboa? Rocky Balboa is a fictional character, so I don't know how he's going to direct okay, the film. Okay, who it is. We're moving on. It's my show. <laughs> Sylvester Stallone. Sylvester Stallone was the director of that film. How interesting. Okay, let me see. Uh, really? Rocky Balboa uh, is a fictional character. How much yes. time we have? Oh. To, how are we doing time-wise, Trevor? We're, we're at the end. I mean, we're Close way end. over, but we're good. We're, well, okay. Eight. We're going to go for... Just because we're 19, over, the ratings 19, don't stop. 19 is fire. Three or four this. more questions. Just we're because five. we're over, the ratings don't stop. Okay, go ahead. This Reese, is, we still have the same number. viewership. Reese, give Number 19. Thank you, Reese. Thanks for... All right. But you have to sing this song with the question. Who yes, has? This is awesome. My kids still like it. 
Who has over 5 billion views for their YouTube video? Baby shark, do 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 do. Baby shark, do 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 do. What is the name of the person that created that? Is it a person or is it a company? I don't or know. Whoever somebody, created it. How let's go with whoever. It comes on before the song plays. It's actually right? somebody in Korea. Oh, is it? <laughs> you were close, James. <laughs> there goes our swing and a miss. There again. goes our ratings hey, for that culture. Gonna, uh, <laughs> you know who my bed's on? You offended a there lot of our ratings there. for that. <laughs> There goes our ratings for that demographic, James. Congratulations. Noah Hill's on the scoreboard. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, Hill. Yeah. Side, and Bradley Brad Luke comes in second, second again that again. round. He's just oh, man. Brad Luke, get, Brad, get turn, your fingers Turn your dial up up, brother, for you can get in here on these questions. Oh, so Korea created. Congratulations, Noah. Korea, huh? Okay, we're ready for a new question, Reese. Somebody said pink gong on that one. That's pretty good. Close. Pink song. Reese, Close. Reese. Number 13. Maybe that was a, a misspelling. Which sea creature has three hearts. Which sea creature has three hearts? Finding Nemo. <laughs> Some of your answers. <sighs> I don't know if that was a joke or if that was a real I'm answer. I'm pretty sure Finding he was serious. Nemo. Pretty sure he was serious. Dory. What kind of fish was Finding Nemo? A uh, clownfish. What kind yes, of fish was Dory? Huh? What kind of fish was Dory? Uh, a bluefish. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great movie, though. We're waiting. Beverly McKinney. No, oh, Did Ben's got a Beverly McKinney. Nope. Huh? Oh, thank you. Thank you, Ben. Ooh, oh, man. Oh, yeah, yeah. Competition. Sherry I'm, Wade. Whoa. On the score. Sherry Wade is in the Sherry house. on the board. I've just found ben an issue here with this again. whole list. I okay. see that there's bias towards one of the universities. <laughs> I don't say. <laughs> there's no bias. James, there's, there's, no, there's no bias. James, there's no bias on this list. Should we go ahead and go to number 23, Jess? Yeah, I'll read 23. Here's number. Wait, wait, wait. wait. It's not your choice. It's up to Reese. Okay. Reese, you choose whatever you want. Not 23. 23, Reese. Number three. Number Thank three. you, Reese. I'll read it. My daughter just learned some of these. Okay. Um, and has songs with them. Okay. Name the three primary colors. The three. When I first read that question, I thought, I don't know what that means. Primary? There's a lot of colors. I or mean, color. Crayola has a box of 64. But they're not primary. These are primary. Like, these are the colors. So if you open up a box of Crayola crayons and there's 64 of them, are these three going to be, like, prominent right in the middle? Probably not. Got to no, name let's the talk, colors. Let's wait just a minute. Sherry Wade. Sherry Wade. Oh, hey, Ben, you're probably the most not. Uh, why are these labeled the primary colors? Can yeah. you answer that question? They're most visible. No. Uh, I thought it had something to do with you can take these three colors and make everything. Every other color. That's what I thought. Yeah. I'll go with that. Yeah. Huh. Which is. That is correct. And I think it has something to do with the light. Not exactly sure of all the details, but I think that's the. Maybe yeah. somebody in the if comments you, knows. So on police cars, no, these colors light, are all on. Maybe police it's cars. in light. They it's a different. It's red, green, and blue. Oh, it's the same. That, that's was that the right answer? Red, no. yellow, and blue yeah. is what the producer I gave me. I think in light, using light, it's <laughs> red, green, and blue. But in in every other like physical world, it's red, yellow. Every other physical world. Uh, who's in the, right. Who's in the lead? Red, yellow. Uh, I believe Jerry Wade. No. And Brad Luke. There's a tie, yep. And Ben Johnson. And Ben Johnson has two three also. Three-way three -way tie? Yeah. Do they know three this is tie. a local pizza? Delivery okay, Reese. <laughs> yep. uh, Brad Luke, I think, gave us a better answer there. There are colors that cannot be made by any other colors being mixed together. You know, Brad is an art I teacher. Gonna, I don't know dude's got like three master's degrees. Right? Right? I should have asked Thank him. you, Brad. Is that right? I went to school to color. He knows. Wow. So they <laughs> I went to school to color. <laughs> Hey, James. James, how many master's degrees do you have? A couple. Hold on, wait a second. You're telling me Brad Lute has a master's degree in He has in three master's he's degrees. In coloring? No, He has one for every coloring. primary color? Could you imagine yeah, if you walked into class? He's a class. high school hey, art teacher. He's a high school art teacher. If you walked into class and saw that guy as your teacher, can he draw? You, what, yes, he can, can draw. Dude, that dude would get my attention every time. Let me tell you something else. I thought he had a master's degree in beard growing. He's got the best beard in the state. Yeah, you ain't lying. Absolutely. Let's throw a picture of Brad up on the screen. Out of control, man. Out of control. Hey. We're about to control. lose hanging with right, yeah. hair. 20, here we go. Here Number we go. 20. 20. We're actually gaining, gaining our viewers back. I, I tried to here tell you we would. Well, it's getting lighter. People are losing. The kids are down. And yeah. He said anyway, the kids are down. Word uh, spreading. So this, this, Number is, 20. this is a personal favorite of mine. I don't know how, but okay. Um, what is the name of the bear Nathan. in the Jungle Book? What is the name of the bear in the Jungle Book? Whoa. Goodness. Be like how is that possible? That's the... How? Oh, because you put the question up. 
Well, no, I think no, spelling no, matters. No, 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 oh, it absolutely matters. Why do you misspell no way. You why gotta do spell it. No, no, no. Why, why spelling why matters. Somebody what is this? How did somebody out? put a U in it? How did they spell it? What are we giving fifth place awards out now? Somebody put a U in it. Tell me how to tell us how to spell it. Are we giving fifth place awards out now? Somebody tell me how to spell Participation trophies. How did they spell it? Was it Excuse me, it's my show. It's his show. Was it like L U E? I'm gonna let Ben make the decision. If spelling's close enough, we'll take it. Go ahead, Ben. You you make the call here. Does spelling matter or not? I would back that. I think if it's really close, it's good enough. Okay. Otherwise, you know, it's like somebody had to Google it to get it. What did they spell? And Jeopardy spelling matters. Spelled it B-A-L-E-U. That's and close B enough. Baloo is B-A-L-O-O. -O. We're taking it. Who did? Who got it? Uh, Missy. Missy Miller. Missy, Missy Miller. Wow. Okay. The bare necessities of Ow. life will come to you. Okay, let's go on. Reese, which one we choosing? Thank you, Reese. Number 23. 23. I'll take this one, gentlemen. Nobody cares. Uh, who <laughs> won the Heisman Trophy in college football in the year of 2016? Who won the Heisman Trophy? You know what the Heisman Trophy is? It's did for it, the... Oh, this has to be Noah Hill get, getting this one. It did it get taken? Did it. they take it away? Why would they take it away? I don't know. <laughs> Why would they take that away? Did they cheat and something got taken away? <laughs> no, the only thing they got taken away was Kentucky's points that year when you all played. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. This is still my show. Okay. We still got him hanging in the rafters. Wait a minute, it's still my show. All right. Do we have an answer? Hey, I will say that guy was a phenomenal athlete. He's still great to watch for the Baltimore Ravens currently. He's going to be on the cover of Madden this year. Is he? He announced that today. You know what else is going on? See, this is where it gets iffy, Ben. When you when you say you have to have the right spelling, you got to give me the first and last name. You don't need to get the answer. Only one Lamar. That's, that's not right. true. That's, that's my word. Okay, we're taking him. <laughs> All right, we're going. Did someone spell we're going to rules Jackson next wrong? quiz Lamar show. I can't stand no, not following rules. No last name. That wears me Should out. Should I just make up a Kentucky question? Man, oh, there's a Kentucky man. question on here. We can go Excuse next. Me. To. How many national All right, championships? For this, for All this right. test of a quiz show, Caleb Rout got that one, but he shouldn't have because the the correct there's answer is Lamar. There's a ton of Lamar. Lamar could have been, could have been Lamar Miller. Right? Wait a minute, I need to establish things just one more time. Okay, it's your the show. The silence of the audience. Okay, it's your show. It's still my show. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now my Without show rules, says it'd be mayhem, my show says ben. this. How's our viewership holding up? We're great. Tw twenty four. Jess, go ahead and read that one. Question twenty four. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Question twenty four. Show, buddy. It's my show. Reese Hill makes that call. Don't. It's my turn to Thank read. Thank you, Reese. Anyway. Reese. No, it's not. Okay, yeah, you go right ahead and you read that question there, big 24, guy. 24, James. You wanted it, you read it, bud. You wanted it, you read it. Read, read it to it. the audience. I'll read, read it, it to the audience. Because all we do is win Read it to the audience. Okay. Right. Yeah, that, so read Here that question go. to the audience. All okay. Right. Are you, all is ears. it 24, Reese? Yes, that's what she said. Reese thinks it's funny. You know yeah. why? Because she's a U of L fan. 24, read it. I'm not worried about it. Okay, read it. How many Heisman Trophy winners does the University of Kentucky have? True, that should be a quick answer. Quiet. Wait for the answer. That Wait for the answer. Time. Might be the easiest question of the night. It's already there. <laughs> Caleb Rout, zero. There you Caleb go. Rout. Caleb knows the stuff. Caleb's, Caleb's running away with the competition. Many, glad you read that How question. How many basketball national championships? Just for the How record. How many SEC regular season tournaments? Just for How the record. How many NBA players do we currently have in the league? Just for the record. I'm not, I'm not falling into his trap, by the Just way. Just for the record, our conversation about UK and U of L is now over. Okay. I, and, I didn't fall into trap. And Caleb Rout is ahead. Yes. Is he really? He's ahead. He is ahead. Oh, yeah. Okay. Since yeah. you guys Caleb don't want to follow rules, right, he is ahead. All right, we're going to keep going here. We need another okay, question. Reese. Reese, throw a number. Nine. Number nine. Question nine. Oh, this is a good one. I like this it. This is a good one. Lucky Ooh. Charms, Honey Nut Cheerios, and Cinnamon Toast Crunch, or C2 Crunch for you hipsters, are made by what cereal company? Is that what they call it, C2 Crunch? C2 Crunch. What's your favorite cereal out of those three right there? Um... It's, it's not now that a, I'm a grown up, honey nut Cheerios. <laughs> he said, "Now that I'm a grown up, that's Lucky a debatable. Charms. That's a debatable statement, Lucky James. Charms. That's not a question. Lucky you Charms Rittigers. leaves that film in your mouth. I'm pretty sure that's a debatable you know? statement. <laughs> but now that I'm an adult, cinnamon toast crunch. Sherry no, Wade. Sherry no Wade. Sherry Wade. Let me tell you, Aldi. Sure. Aldi the answer will give you was a run General Mills. Main, main, main brands. You go to Aldi and get it. It's okay. almost the same. Question number one. Uh, uh, by the way, how many now, more questions are we going to go we with? Uh, we're going to do three more questions. All right, good. Okay. Three more. And there's a tie between Caleb Rout and, and Sherry, Sherry Wade. Wade. How okay. many questions do we have left? Sherry. Plenty. Plenty. Yeah. Number fourteen. James, you want that one? Uh, yep. Interesting. Was this said on one of the shows? Yes, it was. Yeah. Okay. Glad you watch. Yeah. This is like the first one I've tuned into here. <laughs> <laughs> we can tell. We can according, tell. According to Harry, what is the best brand of flour for baking? According to Harry, what is the best brand of flour for baking? You That's think somebody very, will actually get this answer? That was a very 
well-read question, I, James Carter. I, I, I give him credit. That's your best question of the night. Hats off to you. Thanks. Best question. question of the night. I read sometimes. Practice makes perfect. Brad sometimes. Luke for the win. No way. Out of boy, Brad. No. Brad. 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 This, this guy got hanging with Harry on DVR. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Stephanie Here's and the boy yeah. fell asleep. I'm Ben's watch watching Harry. Harry he, he Ben watches <laughs> hanging me. with Harry. When you know, you know. Excuse me. We now have a three-way well, three tie. Way I love it. Man, I that's going to be a lot so of these, queen. So these last two questions are going to Brad, gonna you and Caleb are going to have to split the pizza. Maybe Brad Luke, there in town. Yeah. Caleb Brown, yeah. and Sherry Wade. Okay, Reese, right. question number four. Number four. Question four. Ah, I knew this answer. Really? What is the only insect that can turn its head is that a true real what thing? Is the, it, is, it is absolutely true. What is the only insect that can turn its That's head? That's amazing. With all the insects out there. There's a lot of them. And they're small, they're large, and the only one can do that. Fact check that. That is amazing. <laughs> I mean, I'm not, I'm not even going to go check. anywhere on that, James. I mean, you just said there's a lot of insects large Sherry and Wade. Sherry Wade. Sherry Wade. Coming in, punching, Man, throwing geez, the knockout I punch, have, maybe. I have a feeling Jim. Burning that Google up. I buddy. have a feeling Jim and the boys are probably... Burning the, the Google, Google machine huh? up yeah, while she's yeah. typing away. I've got Jim and the boys are one. I'm not taking anything away okay. from you, Sherry. I think Time you're out. a very brilliant hey, woman. They haven't had dinner yet, man. They're trying to get <laughs> pizza. That's right. They can get pizza tonight. Yeah, that's right. those guys. Yeah. Hey, listen. We're at a position right now where, uh, if I'm not correct, we have uh, we only have two questions left. Yes. yes. Two questions yep. left. And uh, so Sherry can take off, or Caleb and Brad and Sherry could end up with a three-way tie. And Jazzy you Ford... Guess would have to buy three pizzas for three different families. Oh, so they don't have to split one? No. no. Okay. no. I'm a generous so, okay. man. Okay, Reese, question number... I'm a generous man. Co question number 11. For the Grand Championship. No, well, we got two, two questions. There's two, two questions. questions. So. All right, so this is the second one of the Grand Championship. <laughs> the semifinal of the Grand Championship. This what? is for all you history buffs out there. History? Jay, you're a big history guy, right? Uh, okay, let's yeah. go. Yeah. The Statue of Liberty was given to the U.S. by which country? You ever, you ever been to the Statue of Liberty? I've never been to New York. This I is have. really intense for me. Oh, Caleb right Brown. Now, I don't know that I want to go. Caleb Brown Caleb comes Brown through in with the, the right house answer. Again. And the right answer was? was? France. France. I don't know if Caleb you know has that? watched all the Hanging with Harry episodes, but I feel like this is the first time I remember him like tuning in. So he's... He's brought it tonight. The dude really is, wants some pizza. I feel like maybe the producer sent out the questions to him. Sherry was was the second answer, so she's right, right there. Wow. Sherry's, right Sherry's, there. There. Sherry's wanting pizza bad. Bad, yes. <laughs> she okay. Right there. Uh, we only now, have like now, one or two left, Brad, right? Brad Luke. Brad Luke was wrong on that question. Brad Luke was wrong? Well, he's, he's an art teacher. Hey, wait a so minute now, guys. Time out. We're going to give... If the question was, what color is the Statue of Liberty, he might have got it. Time out. Time out. It needs to be green. Time out. What do we got here, Harry? Time out. I'm listening. But through oxidation... Time out. I'm it's now brown. He said uh, oxidation. In a minute, in just a moment, Reese is going to Reese is going to choose the question, and Ben's going to get it up pretty quickly, and so we got to be ready. And uh, this is pretty important because if Brad according, Luke were to get the right answer, there'd be three pizzas going out all over the countryside. According to my list, there's four questions remaining. Well, we're so, not doing four. I understand that. So I was wanting Reese to. Oh, let's 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 do all four. Are you going to give him your uh, credit card number, or how's this going to work? No, matter. James, I mean, what is this, okay. identity theft here? Listen, I'm going to give in to the <laughs> co-producer of this program, which is Trevor Ford, and we're going to do the final four questions, but let's get on with it. Okay. Okay. Reese, which, we my could, wife, we my could wife's make already them, upset. Let's go ahead and just We could make them worth question. double Two, here. six, 15, or 21? 21. What was the city... No, I'm sorry. To what city was Saul traveling when he encountered a great and blinding light? I think to a what city? I think a quizzing when I think about it. <laughs> to, you know? to, hey, Matt don't Thrasher. lean on that table too hard, Thrasher man. Matt would be proud. To what city was Saul traveling when encountering a great and blinding light? Sherry, Sherry says she beat Caleb. Last question. Can you check me on that, Ben? I got Caleb before Sherry. <laughs> Sherry is really She is to... really competitive. Yeah, Caleb's first, Sherry. Pipe it down. <laughs> <laughs> Sherry got that one though. Oh, Damascus. Sherry got that one. Okay. Oh my Sherry's goodness. Good. Oh, Brad Sherry's Luke was right there. Brad, Brad Luke, Luke was right faster. there. Brad, Man. work on your jump, brother. <laughs> work on your jump. Get them thumbs moving, bro. Okay, Reece, what are you using what your number? index finger? Two, six, or fifteen. Number Here two. Here we go. Brad, this should be going for you. Okay. Okay. Hold on. Sorry. Hold on. Okay. Ready? I thought we lost the broadcast. Here we go. Here. Brad, this is a way for you to take a lead, I would think. No, How many behind. soccer players should each team have on the field at the start of each match? How many soccer players should each team have on the field at the start of each match? 
If Brad doesn't get this one, I give up. He also coaches soccer. This guy's Wait a, a soccer coach. You're talking about Brad. He's coach. talented. Man, I really need to talk to him a little bit more because I had no There's an idea. answer, but he is wrong. There's another answer, but they are wrong. They must not be very good. Noah at... Hill in the house. Noah Hill's in Where the house. Where was Brad at? Did he fall asleep? Oh, Brad did. Oh, wow. wow. Brad said 10. No, you're still in the hunt. Do we need to fact check that, Ben? Because I don't know soccer. I just copy and pasted that one. I don't, I don't, I know sports, so I don't know that question. Wait a minute. American sports. We 11. don't watch the football. I don't, I know sports, so I don't know soccer. Sorry for all the Pele fans. Herman Weedmeyer said 18. Maybe he was counting Kick both. that demographic right out off the I show. I like the effort, Herman. If, I like I, if we lose the soccer fans, it's, I'm sorry. All right, what's our score at here, Harry? Our time. score like, is, uh, like excuse me, guys. Like <laughs> hey, you two guests, excuse me. Yeah. Uh -huh. Sherry Wade has five. Okay. Kayla Rout has four. Okay. Brad Luke has three, and there's some others that are trying Stragglers. to come along, but they're not there yet. Yeah. And Tara Brad Johnson has a couple. Ben Brad, Brad tried to say <laughs> there's ten actual players, and then the goalie, or what he said as the keeper. Oh, you know come what? on. I That's a player. If, no, He's listen, wearing a He's a field, player. If you're on the field, you're playing the game, are you not? That's I like agree. saying you have two guards, two forwards, and a center. Come on, they're all players. I mean, if you want to be that technical, I think you could actually play with seven, uh, according to the PSSG rules, but... I think we're just going to go with the okay. I think we're going to go with As professional Ooh. soccer. Sound Brad Luke good. says the goal is not the field. Okay. I Brad disagree Luke's with Brad. Luke's a boy, and we all <laughs> love him, but we're going I love on him. with the show. I mean, he lost There's that no one, bro. Okay, please, what number? Six and 15. Um, number six. call, Reese. Six. Great call. What college did Brett Favre attend and play for? What college did Brett Favre Attend and play for. If Clay Intrigan is watching, he should be all over this. Clay's one. probably not watching. No, I wouldn't think so. I texted him earlier. I don't know if he has a new number though. Does he? No, I have, I have Clay's number. He's... This is intense, man. Like Clay's a big is... Packer fan. Caleb with Ooh, I'm gonna... Caleb route with the wrong answer. Is that Ooh. right? What answer did he go? With? Google Alabama, failed him. Roll Tide. Google failed him. <sighs> Caleb, man. I, th I mean, I thought he would get that. Sherry Wade with Indiana. Ooh. Yikes. 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 Football? You only I mean, get one really answer, too. He I really think. didn't hit the map till he was at the Packers, right? Uh, he, you know, he was actually drafted Did by the Atlanta Falcons. Becky oh. Hagan in the house. Becky <laughs> Hagan in the house. Hey. Todd was all over that one. Because I'll trade her a pizza I guarantee for you Todd Hagan was all over that one. Yeah. Yeah. Google got fired up a little bit later, but she got it in. That's good. And he misspelled Southern. I probably wouldn't have gave that to him. You would have gave that to him? No, wait a minute. He's question. your son. That's the only reason you would have gave it to him. <laughs> this is the final question of the evening. Should we do something? Make it worth double or something? No, we can't really do that. Because oh, man, I'd make it worth five Sherry points. Has five? Sherry has five. Like so if we you don't lose, steal you have to buy us a pizza her. or something like that? Let's say <laughs> if, if the first person that answers is correct, regardless of where are, they are in the standing, they will also get a pizza. Winner takes all, huh? So the winner is going to get a pizza. Sherry Wade's already in. How much money do you bring tonight? That's Jay? what I'm saying. Well, maybe, unless Caleb, Caleb Rout. But if the you ever first... Heard of that? Wait, you ever heard of IOU? Excuse me. <laughs> if the first person that answers is correct, if it's their first answer, they, they, they get, get a pizza. pizza. Okay. Now, okay. that's fine. I will, can I, I'll set the president, president, <laughs> the president here. Don't try. Helps if you're a car person. Here we go. Okay. In what year... Was the Corvette introduced? In what year was the Corvette introduced? I had people texting me on my personal phone saying, I'm not getting their answers on Facebook. Ben you Johnson, know, if you're watching still, brother, I'm getting your answers. You're just not fast enough. You know, right? we build the Corvette here in Kentucky. Did you know that? Bowling Green. Have you ever been there? The answer's coming in. They're just wrong so far. Uh, oh. Yes, I've been to Bowling Green. Yep. No, no, the museum. Oh, no. Oh. Who it's is there? It? Brad Luke. Brad no Luke. Way. Oh, Brad. The man himself. Brad he Luke sneaks through. in and gets him a pizza. No way. So, uh, how did he get a pizza? I, <laughs> what do I you mean? Know. You he, remember when the? You what, just said whoever answers gets a pizza. I the, think I said if the first answer was, was correct. correct. Oh, and the first. But, answer but was since incorrect. it's oh, you know, but I misunderstood you. Correct. I misunderstood. Well, probably you. what we're going to do is. Since uh, Sherry Wade is the, unquestionably the winner. She won hands down, huh? We're going to give her a pizza. But Absolutely. we also have two. Extra large pizza, I think. We have two that were close For behind. For the family, man. For the family. Caleb Rout and Brad toppings Luke. Too, you and might so well, we are also. Five toppings on yeah. that first pizza, yeah. Harry. 
That needs to be about a sixty-five dollar pizza. I was gonna say, what, what, so, for appetizers, we're going to Ruth Chris. I think we should go to Impella's area and get the my best show. pizza they got. I have lost my show. Terry, right, you lost right. it when you signed listen, up for this. Listen, <laughs> we can mute them if you. Here's like the point. Here. Here's yeah. here's the point. There's an unquestionable winner in Sherry Wade. Yes. We all knew she's winning. Pizza coming to the Wade fan. Yep. But we also have two that were so close behind that I think they deserve a pizza as well. Man, what a, what a And that would be Brad Luke and I guess Caleb we're in the church, James. Oh, now, sorry. all we need you to do is tell us, do you want your pizza tonight or tomorrow? And where would you like to... Us, no, maybe we'll decide where we're going to order it. Yeah, we, we'll decide where we're going to order it from. But just tell us if you want it tonight or tomorrow. And make sure we have... Address. Your address. Right. And everything else will be taken You don't care. have to post it and don't post for your everyone to see. On Facebook, yeah. No, please. that's right. You can and just send it to Trevor. Send it. No, listen, listen, listen. listen. You send it to this number. To Trevor. Listen. Mail. Listen. And we <laughs> send it to this number. Your what'd you say, Harry? Address what you want on your pizza? No, nah, we don't care about what they want. You're gonna We're send your gonna number <laughs> across this thing right now? Eight five nine nine six zero five two one one is our private text number. That number's so been you, disconnected. If you send that info, who who won? Who got pizza? Nine six zero five two one one. Whose number is that? Sherry Wade. This is just text number. Sherry Wade's a clear winner. Yep. You, Sherry you Wade obviously have not been watching Wait, any of our feeds. The eight five nine. The Wade. The Wade, like the Wade family gets a pizza. Oh. Wade family gets pizza. Yes. Grand champion pizza. Yes. yes. Yep. But so do Brad Luke and yep. Caleb Brown. Gotcha. So Brad, Caleb, send send us your info so, so to eight five nine nine six zero five two one one. And Terry, go ahead and so wrap us up here. Okay, I'm going to add to the rule. So if you don't want your pizza. You have to love down and give it to someone younger wow. than you. Wow, that's that? great. Okay, beautiful, Ben. Thank you. Now, listen, guys, we're going to wrap up tonight. It's been a blast. I, I hope you've been able to hang in with us. And, uh, you know, it, the, the, the evening went in a way that I could have never anticipated, and that is celebrating relationships, particularly across generations. And in the midst of all of our fun, would you just be aware of that tomorrow? You know, both ways. It's easy to be... Uh, to be down on young folk that don't love older folk like we should. Just, just be intentional. James's word, be intentional in the way you communicate and express your love to one another. And thank you for joining us tonight. And uh, Reese, thank you for your help. She doesn't normally speak. Thank you, but Reese. tonight she was a help. And James and Jesse, it was a joy to have you guys Thank here. you for having me on. Oh, man, it was great. a joy. We'll do it again. I'm we'll sure we will. Well, After you see the ratings tomorrow come out. Okay, we'll see about okay. that. But, uh, <laughs> But uh, we'll get you a booster seat too, Jay. Please, I need one. <laughs> when we're done, when we're done, you can you can use that number. I don't know if we put the number in the so in the chat. So wait, we wait, have, one second. Sorry, one okay, second. go ahead. Put that number on. If there's anything that you particularly would need from us, I mean, if you need some a prayer, if you need something that we can provide or help you with in some way, you can text it that number because this is fun. This is a way we can kind of be together, enjoy being together but we don't want to ignore real needs in the body if they're there. Now, James, what are you going to do? You're going to be crazy for <laughs> no, I No, I'm sorry. I, just, I didn't know we had a number. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> I really haven't been able to tell you Ben, we've had that lot. number for like two uh, weeks now? That, I just think it's awesome. And Mr. is, is 859 number, though. That's like a Lexington area James, code. it's an app you download on your phone. <laughs> Interesting. And you can he have just your own private mind. number. I just, I didn't know I'm sure a lot of people I, who are I like cheating on their silly. wives and stuff have that kind of stuff, but I didn't know it was possible. If you have anything, absolutely, text the line. Okay. Uh, you going to pray for us before we go out? Yeah, I'm going to pray for us. <laughs> I, I would love a prayer right about now. Right here is the pizza money right here. Right out of Jesse's back pocket. Okay, let's pray for we Should go. have been okay. sitting on it, apparently. Yeah, maybe. Are you ready to be quiet? Yes, so I yes, I am. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Lord, I thank you for this night together, and it has been full of just silliness and enjoyment from beginning to end. And, and I wish everybody could have been in the room because it really has been a joy for us. We've laughed and and we've engaged with one another in the process, and it's been a joy. And I thank you for those that sat at home and took in all the foolishness and were apart. And somehow we are learning to do that better in these days, and, and I thank you for that. Remind us, I pray, especially a little bit about the conversation tonight, to be intentional, maybe as much with our words as with anything. For some of us, it's a real difficult thing to just say to people how we feel about them. And help us be intentional and work at that, I pray. And thank you for those who get pizza. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people say it. Amen. Amen. Hey, I, I've got good news before we send, send it off. Okay. Somebody just texted me on the number and said they want to love down and they want to pay for one of those pizzas.
So I won't tell you who that is. Amen. Whoever that is, amen. (laughs) (laughs) So that's sweet. Thank you. That's That's good.